Hey, what's up guys? Nick here. In the never ending quest for more horsepower, um, I decided to make a big leap with the Tillotson. I went on EC Carburetor's website and I got their 58 millimeter stroker kit for the Tillotson. It's gonna bump the displacement from 212 to 223 cc's. Uh, it comes with Wildcat 58 millimeter stroker crank, EC pinnacle rod, and a 70 millimeter flat top piston. It should bring me to zero deck, obviously more displacement and a lot more torque. And it gives me the potential to make more horsepower on the road with a bigger cam and bigger head because you know what they say, there's no replacement for displacement. So I got this shed in the middle of nowhere. I got the engine in there. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna tear the whole thing apart, put the new rotating assembly in. See you guys inside. Okay, so before I proceed with putting the stroker kit in, I'm going to check ring gap. Um, basically, I'm gonna put the piston ring inside the cylinder. I'm gonna take my feeler gauges <coughs> and I'm gonna check the gap right there. I'm gonna focus. Ooh, doesn't wanna focus. Anyways, I'm gonna check the gap right there. And I'm gonna see where it's at, usually you want it between, I think standards, like between eight and 12 thousandths. So all you do is you take the ring, compress it, oops, and then you square it. And what I usually do is I square it up with the piston. I'll make sure the ring lands are all down even. Pull it out. And then I don't know if you guys can see that right there there's the gap take the feeler gauge oh i can't see and you run it through and that's pretty good so that's about eight thousandths that's pretty perfect so i'm gonna check the rest of the rings and then i will install the piston onto the rod and then we'll get the piston inside of the cylinder okay so i got the piston rings put on the silver HY ring goes on top, the black HY ring goes on the second ring land, and then you have the two smaller rings with the waffle ring on the inside. And they also say you wanna keep your ring space about 120 degrees apart. Just do your best to keep the gaps as far away as possible from each other, and you should be good. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, put the bearings on the rod. Pretty simple. Okay, so basically you have this little ear lip on the bearing and you have a little like indent on the cap basically you want to line up that ear with that indent like right to the edge so right there and then when you press down you don't want to press down on the middle of the bearing you want to press down on each side at the same time sort of like this So 
so that way your bearing is evenly in the cap. So now that we have the bearings installed on the rod and on the cap, we're finally gonna take the piston and we're gonna put it on the rod. First things first, I like to uh, take the retaining ring and put it on one side of the piston first. So that way when I put the wrist pin in, it doesn't slide out on the other way. So I installed it, basically there's a groove inside that piston and I'll take the one side of the ring and I'll push it in there and I'll take my thumb and I'll shove the ring down into that uh, the other side of the groove. So that way it's completely in there. Um, you can see that there's a gap. I'm actually gonna move this uh, retaining ring around so that the ga there's no gap where this like little opening is. Now all that's left to do is to put the final retaining ring inside the piston. And there we have it. We have an assembled piston and a rod that's ready to go in the block. So this is my piston ring compressor. Uh, it's when I put the piston in, compress the spring, so that way I can drive it into the cylinder. Two things I like to do is I like to lube up the compressor and I like to lube up the cylinder so that way everything will slide in very easily. And when you put your piston into the compressor, make sure your skirt's sticking out a little bit so that way it can be guided into the cylinder. So this is the heart and soul of the beast. This is the 58 millimeter Wildcat stroker crank. We're just gonna slide it in to the block and we're just gonna make sure everything fits. Just keep in mind that the side with the woodruff key goes in first. Just remember a few things before you drive the piston into the cylinder. Make sure the compressor is flat to the deck. Basically what I'll do is I'll take a hammer and I'll actually tap it so that way I know it's flat. Then I take the end of the hammer and then I drive the piston in and uh, so it should go in. And there you have it, the piston is in. So we're gonna drive the piston and the rod down and we're gonna connect it to the crankshaft. Okay, so we had a minor uh, technical difficulty, but we got the rod in with the crank. I got the bolt started, but I'm just hand tightening now to get them secured to the rod. Piston is in, it's looking good. So we're just gonna keep trucking along and then I'll update you guys when the more important things arise. So we finally got the rod installed. Um, the bolts are, are uh, tightened down, but they're not like torqued um the initial torque is going to be uh i think it's 60 it's 60 inch pounds on each and then you go up 15 alternating until you hit 150 and then we should be good to go so i had to stop the video um had some technical difficulties uh you i had a clearance to top of the block um the top of the rod was hitting right where the jug meets the cylinder so I had to clearance that out and then I checked the rest of the block to make sure I wasn't having any clearance issues and I'm not. I even put the cam in to check to see if the crank was hitting the compression release and it's not. So I'm going to actually torque this rod down again and then we're going to finish assembling the block.
So that's basically how you put a stroker assembly in a Tillerson 212. A couple key things to go over is one, I did get a pre-clearance crank. Um, the cranks are usually pre-clearance for the cams and the cam compression release because the sides of the counterweights will hit on the compression release and the tops of the counterweights will actually hit on the cam lobes. So usually in most cases, you can just get a 224 cam um, cam core from like dyno cams or any other cam manufacturer. But since this was a pre-clearance cam and the cam's only 265 lift in this, I was able to get away with that. Um, secondly, clearancing the top of the block near the jug, I had to do a lot of that in order to get that uh, rod to clear. Uh, that's something you're probably gonna run into. Also, even if you get the pre-clearance crank, the pinnacle rod and all that stuff. Other than that, it was pretty easy. It just went in like any other rotating assembly. Um, different blocks, you may have to clear into different things. I'm not sure how a Predator block would be or a genuine Honda block. So that's just something you have to take into consideration with at least any stroker rotating assembly. There's gonna be some clearancing. There's gonna be something you have to do because it's a lot bigger than what the block was designed for. So also thirdly, I'm running some ZDDP in the engine. Um, I love ZDDP. It's a zinc additive. It's like a extra layer of protection onto the oil to keep from wiping out the cam lobes and the lifters. So that's number one thing I always like to run in all my engines. Well, that's it for the video. Um, like, comment, um, what stroker do you have? Is it a Predator 224, Wildcat 223? Um, do you have your own custom 223 stroker or do you run a 236 or 263? Um, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell to get notified of my next video. And in the next video, we're gonna be putting it on the bike, breaking the engine in, and we're gonna see how fast this 223 really is. So until next time, guys, peace.